Good morning. Before we get into our Bible story today, I'd like to have just a moment with your moms. Moms, today we're going to need from the Lesson 3 packet the laminated Jonah, which looks like this, a small bowl of sudsy water, a paper towel or dish towel, and some washable markers. Okay? All right, kids, are you ready? We're going to be in the Old Testament today in the book of Jonah. Now, you may need to look in your table of contents to find where that book is, but it is in the Old Testament. So let's talk before we get into Jonah about God's purity. Now, we know we can trust God because we know he's completely holy. Nothing changes his purity. His ways continue to be best whether we choose to accept them or not. Now, God makes me pure and clean. When God created each of you, he made you pure and clean. Now, let's think about something that we know represents God's way. And then think about something that we know represents our own way. So, for example, I know that God wants me to honor my body by caring for it. But instead, let's say I decide to take drugs. Now, if I decide to take drugs, I am no longer pure. My decision has changed me. Now, my decision doesn't change God. He continues to be pure and holy, even though I may have disappointed God with my decision. It doesn't change God. Now, what are some decisions that we make every day that are God's way, wrong way kind of choices? Um, let's think about that for a minute. What if we chose not to obey the law? What if we were to choose to drink alcohol? What if we choose to hurt other people? The bad choices that we've just talked about have really changed who we are, but they haven't changed God at all. In fact, in spite of all our bad choices, God will still pour himself into our hearts to make us pure and holy if we ask him to. Now, all of us sometimes will do the wrong thing. Today's Bible adventure is about a man who did the wrong thing. He made a very bad decision. Now, Jonah may have been a little suspicious when God came to him and said, I want you to go to Nineveh. Now, that probably did not sound quite right to Jonah because Nineveh was a very wicked city. Surely God did not want him to go live with all those lawbreakers and evil people. But when it became clear that that was exactly what God wanted Jonah to do, Jonah decided on his own that this wasn't what he wanted to do. So Jonah decided to do what you might do if you thought that something stunk. He took off. Now, do you have a hiding place where you go to hide when you don't want to do something at your house? You don't have to say it out loud. But do you have some place that you go when you don't want to do something? Do you hide in your room? Do you hide outside? Maybe you hide in your closet or in your brother or sister's room. Well, Jonah decided to run away. What was his big mistake in running away, do you think? You know, he forgot that God knew exactly where he was because you can't hide from God. There's nowhere you can go where God isn't. So you can't hide from God. And Jonah forgot that. Jonah also forgot that God always knows the best way to get our attention. He sees us wherever we go and we cannot hide from God. Jonah thought he had a better plan than God did. So Jonah took his stinky attitude and he ran off to sea. As a matter of fact, he got in a boat headed the opposite direction from Nineveh. So I want you guys to get out your Jonas right now. Okay. And your markers. 
and we're going to color Jonah with a bad attitude. Okay, so what I want you to do is just um, color on Jonah what you think a bad attitude would look like. So I'm going to use some green and some red, but you guys can use whatever color you want. And I'm just going to scribble on him because that's kind of what I think a bad attitude looks like. It's just scribbly lines. What do you think a bad attitude looks like? Can you show me on your Jonah? So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to give Jonah a really bad attitude. All right. So when you're done giving Jonah a bad attitude, can you hold him up? Let's see what he looks like. See, here's my Jonah with a bad attitude. All right, let's take a look at your Jonah with a bad attitude. Wow, that attitude looks pretty stinky, doesn't it? Well, we need to remember that God's ways are best and he knows the best way to get our attention. So while Jonah and his bad attitude were at sea, the waters began to get very rough and a storm came up. Now the sailors thought they were all going to die. So they went to Jonah to ask him to pray for their lives. Now Jonah told them that God was trying to get his attention and for their own safety, they needed to throw Jonah out of the boat and into the ocean. So the sailors did just that. They took Jonah and his very bad attitude and they went right into the raging waters and the sea became calm. But that wasn't the end of God's dealings with Jonah because God sent a giant fish to swallow him up. Imagine what it must have been like to be inside of that fish. There was Jonah floating around in the fish's stomach with his bad attitude. It might have looked a little bit like your bowl of soapy water. Let's swish it around a little bit. Let's see what it might have been like inside that fish. So what do you think happened? As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's just go ahead and put Jonah right in there, just like he's in the belly of the fish, okay? So I'm going to put Jonah inside the fish's tummy. And I'm just going to let him sit there for a minute. I'm going to have to hold him down because my bowl's not very big. Now, what do you think happened to Jonah's attitude um, while he was in the belly of the fish? You think he might have gotten angry? You think he may have decided that he was wrong? I think that, that those things are true. And I know that he asked God to forgive him. So let's see what happened to his attitude. So let's Swish Jonah around a little bit in the belly of the fish, just like he was in there. Just swish him around a little bit. And then after you've swished him around a little bit, let's get our towel and let's pull Jonah out of the fish's belly and see what happened to his attitude. Let's see, I'm going to use my towel to dry him off. Well, look at that. Jonah had a change of attitude. What does it take to clean up your attitude and trust God? I hope God doesn't have to put you in the belly of a fish to change your attitude. All of us have times when God asks us to do things that seem a little fishy. Loving those who treat us badly. Becoming great by serving others, for example. Now, sometimes these little fishy ideas give us big, stinking, bad attitudes, just like Jonah's, because we don't want to obey God. But just as God cleaned up Jonah's attitude, he wants to clean our attitudes up too. And we need to let him do that. Now, after being inside the fish, Jonah was ready to say that God's ways really are best. Jonah did go to Nineveh. And he told the people that they needed to stop their evil ways. And the people decided to change their ways and God forgave them. Jonah's story shows us that God's ways are always best and that we are always happiest when we obey him. Do you think it's easier to do things God's way? Do you think that God helps us want to do what's best? 
We can know God's ways by knowing God. So when we get to know God better by reading our Bibles and talking to him every day, he'll help us to know what his ways are. God never forces us to do things his way, but when we do things our way, our choices often lead to trouble, just like Jonah's did. God's ways are best even when we aren't sure we want to do them. So I will see you here next week when we're going to talk a little more about Jonah. Because just when you think Jonah got his attitude straightened up, something else happened. So next week I'll meet you here and we'll talk some more about Jonah and a little more about attitude. Have a good week. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.